When customising bikes was a massive craze in the early 2010s, there was an old saying that stock sucks, but if this bike was around, they might have thought differently. Hey everyone, welcome to Roads of Oz. My name is Matt and on this episode we're looking at the Fantic Caballero 500 Scrambler. So what is Fantic, I hear you say? Well, Fantic is an Italian motorcycle manufacturer that's been in business since 1968. It's been in operation for over 50 years. They have a very strong background in small capacity bikes. They've really upped their game and developed some very impressive off-road and enduro machines. And for the past couple of years, the Caballero 500 has been available in Australia. Uh, big shout out to Jason and the team at Gasoline Motor Co. They're located on 1047 Burke Street, Waterloo. Go check out their store, it's absolutely amazing. Anyway, back to the Scrambler. If you were after a Scrambler, you really need to check this out. It's priced at $12,999 plus on-road costs, and it's a really impressive unit. It comes with some quality components like an arrow exhaust, library brakes, front and rear, and a six-speed gearbox. Now, even though it says 500, it's a water-cooled 450cc motor, and it's quite impressive. It puts out 40 horsepower at 7,500 RPM, and 43 Newton meters at 6,500. When I went into it, I wasn't expecting too much power, but this bike was quite punchy, and that's down to its weight. So if you want more power, in 2023, Fantic is releasing the Scrambler 700, which shares the Yamaha motor from the XSR, so it should be quite an impressive beast. As per Euro specification, it has ABS, but it is disengageable. That's more for off-road, but this model is specifically for the road. Now, what do I like about it? Well, the thing is light. Weighs in at 150 kilograms. It's a true scrambler in every sense. That lightness helps get it up to speed pretty quickly. The motor is more than capable of all the posted speeds and then still has a bit more up its sleeve. I did give it a few tests, doing a rolling acceleration from 40 to 80 kilometers an hour and it done it with ease. It also does your highway speeds. I went from 80 to 100 and just rolled on the throttle and the way she went. Now my first impressions of this bike, it reminded me a lot of my Honda FT500, which was a fun machine, and this one is exactly the same. It's a lot of fun. Initially, I was a bit concerned about the tires, but once I got used to them, they held up to the corners quite well. So look at it, it's a really nice bike, and it does turn heads, and you'll also find you're turning and looking at your reflection in the windows as you're pulling up at the set of lights. So yes, it is a head turner. I took it to the Royal National Park and put it for its paces and had an absolute ball riding this thing. Due to how light it is and its size, I was able to flick it through the bends and it's just a lot of fun. Because it's so compact, you can work your way through traffic no problem at all. It is a great city bike and it's also a lot of fun just taking it out. So what didn't I like? Well. The dash, although it suits the bike, it's starting to look a bit dated. Being an LCD dash, we're moving towards TFT screens and if they could design one to integrate into the bike nicely, I think that would suit its prospective buyers uh, more than that other dash. On the dash, it did have a fuel gauge. It was only like a four bar indicator and problem was when it gets down to that last bar, it starts flashing. The annoying thing about that is it's flashing way too early. The bike also has a fuel light, so that flashing is kind of redundant and it does get irritating. Also, you could be riding it, it's flashing when you pull up at the servo and put it on the side stand, it goes from one bar to two bars, which indicates half full. So I know I love fuel gauges, but when they're like that, they can be a bit annoying. It's only a small gripe, but still, it's still annoying in my opinion. I was surprised it didn't come with a USB um, due to the simple fact is most of us have smartphones now and I would have had a USB outlet on the handlebars. Now in saying that it wouldn't be a hard install and it'd probably be one of the first things I added to the bike so when you add a phone mount you can use the screen from your phone for maps, directions and any, everything else that we do so it, it could potentially negate the requirement for a TFT screen. 
So who should get one? Well, the bike legitimately sits between the Royal Enfield Scram 411 and a Ducati Scrambler. If you look at the stat stats below, it sits dead in the middle. It's kind of the bike that if you're after something light or if you're a bit smaller in stature, this bike will tick a lot of boxes. So the bike would suit someone who's after a lighter bike and has their heart set on a Scrambler. If you want to do a minor off-road, I'd probably look at the Explorer 500 or the Rally 500. Uh, just due to their suspension settings. So yeah, there you have it. It's a great bike. Go check it out. Go to Gasoline Motor Co in at Waterloo. Jason and the guys are very helpful there. Also, on a side note, some of their other bikes look pretty cool in there. They do some great customs and the showroom is definitely worth checking out. So would I get one? Well, if I was after a small bike, just for regular commuting, it would be up there on my list. It's a lot of fun to chuck around the corners. It's light and it's agile and it's perfect for daily commuting. Anyway, that's pretty much it from me. Thanks very much for watching. If you found the video interesting, please like, share, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. It helps out my channel massively. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next vid.